Hi friends, as we are going into the holiday season, I know that many of us are gonna be going to holiday work parties. We're gonna be getting together with family and friends, going to ugly Christmas sweater parties. We're gonna be traveling hundreds of miles to meet with family. And with that said, it is extremely important that we guard our heart and our mind against um, certain types of people that we may come in contact with that might not be healthy for us. Today, I wanna to talk about the five characteristics of toxic people that you need to avoid this holiday season and really in general. But before I go earn any further, I wanna tell you and give you a warning. This video is really for that person, that lady that wants to advance her life and wants to be all that God has created her to be. She is tired of settling and she wants more from God. She believes that God has greater things in store for her and um, she wants that uh, which is supposed to be her. So this video is for her. If that's not you, go ahead and turn it off right now. You will not hurt my feelings. Okay, let's get started. Number one, the first person that you need to, uh, first characteristic of the person you need to avoid this holiday season is the gossiper. And I call her Gia. Gia the gossiper, I am telling you, she is the type of person, and you know her, she calls you on the phone, she meets with you over coffee and cookies, and she is there to tell you the latest news about everybody. She knows everything about everyone. She's the person that says, oh, did you hear about Uncle Joe? He, he has stage four colon cancer. I, yo, can you believe that? I can't believe that. Or she's talking about a nephew or a brother, a sister that has um, some kind of rare disease, right? She's telling you about Tim who just got diagnosed with this rare condition and then proceeds to say, oh yeah, it's most likely from you know him drinking and smoking all his years of partying, that's how he got this disease, right? So they are quick to tell you news about other people. Not only that, they oftentimes when they are gossiping, they tend to whisper and they tend to talk quietly to you. I don't know why they do that, as if the other person is gonna hear them, but you will know that someone is gossiping when they whisper and talk to you like this about someone and they say, hey, come, let me tell you something in your ear, okay? When they do that, you need to run the other direction. A lot of times gossipers tend to cover up their gossip, right? Especially those in the church by saying, oh, just pray for that person. You know, get in your prayer closet and just fast and pray for what they're going to. Their marriage, you know, uh, their marriage is on the rocks or, you know, they're suffering from this addiction, but pray for that person. You know, I'm just telling you this in secret so you can pray. No, stop it. That's a lie. You know, Proverbs 11, 13 says, a gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person uh, keeps a secret. So friends, I wanna ask you, are you that person that keeps a secret or are you the one that breaks trust by gossiping? You know, Proverbs 16, 28 says, a perverse person stirs up conflict and a gossip separates close friends. I want to tell you uh, an example of when I was in my mid-20s. I had a really good friend. I mean, we were the best of friends in college. We did everything together. We always hung out after uh, school. And then enter in a third friend who this third friend was fantastic. We both loved that person. But slowly but surely, this person, this third friend began to start a he said, she said. When talking to me, they would say, oh, did you hear, you know, this person said this about you. Your friend said this about you. And I would say, what? That doesn't sound like that person. And then she would go back around and say to the other person, oh, did you know Jolly said this about you? And they would say, what, are you serious? And so when me and my friend would get on the phone, I would say, hey, did you say this about me? And they would say, no. And they would say of me, yeah, but you said this. And I would say, no, I didn't. So here was this third friend 
separating two close friends. And unfortunately, our friendship became divided and we lost that friendship because of this gossip. The second characteristic of the per type of a person you need to avoid that's toxic for this holiday season is critical Kathy, or I like to call her negative Nelly. Now this person is always saying something negative about somebody or something. They, it's just who they are. Let's take, for example, it's raining. They're saying to themselves, ah, oh, it's raining again. My hair is going to get so frizzy. You're at a restaurant. This soup is so salty and this fish is undone. It's so cold. And the soup for $12.99, are you kidding me? This is highway robbery. Or they're saying, you know, you're going for a walk and they're like, oh gosh, how much longer is, is it going to take to get there? These heels were not made for walking. I mean, they are saying something negative all the time every time they open up their mouth. They have a negative perspective, a negative outlook on themselves and others. And a lot of times, unfortunately, it comes from their upbringing. They were maybe surrounded by a parent uh, or a sibling grandparent that was always negative. Or uh, they have been through a traumatic uh, event in their life where they didn't process it and they're carrying and harboring all those negative emotions with them through life as baggage. Not only that, critical people tend to have a high standard in which they measure, measure themselves and others. They judge others harshly. They have this standard of perfection that it needs to be this way, done at this time, done, um, done in, in, in these parameters, or it's unacceptable. And if you don't do this perfectly, then you know, you're bad or they begin to judge you and you really need to be careful when you are around them. Number three, the third characteristic of a toxic person is the woe is me mentality. I like to call her woe is me Wanda. That's right. She is the type of person that sees the glass half empty. She is the person who has a victim mentality. I have been wronged all my life is something that she says. Uh, what happened to me, it was very traumatic and very painful. Uh, she has the victim, plays the victim card often to herself. She plays the victim card and to other people. Help me, rescue me, feel sorry for me take care of me. When this type of person enters your life, they tend to uh, attach themselves to you like white on rice. They want to become instant best friends. And you're like, whoa, hold on a second. You know, can we first like introduce ourselves, like make small talk? No, they are like, go, go hot, go deep right away. And oftentimes this person, they tend to lavish, uh, things uh, on you, uh, begin to become extravagant with you and your family, and they actually want the same done for them. And when you don't uh, do the things that they give to you and do for you, they a lot of times instantly cut you off. They cut you off uh, like nobody's business. And so this can be the woe is me personality. A lot of times with this person also is they leave you drained. They leave you feeling overwhelmed uh, after you get off the phone with them or, or after you're done spending time with them. You're just like, man, that was too much. Or you feel like you need to take a nap or something, you know, because you feel like you just went through a marathon um, in talking with them, spending time with them. They leave you emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and physically drained when you're around this person. So you need to learn to distance yourself from woe is me, Wanda. Number four, fourth characteristic of a toxic person is jealous Jan. That's right. Jealous Jan is found in a lot of us actually. She is the type of person who doesn't want you to necessarily improve yourself, succeed, advance yourself, or better yourself in any way that surpasses um, you, right? 
it is okay if you do good things in your life, uh, go certain places, but the minute you surpass uh, Jan, she gets jealous of you. If you decide that you want to uh, get a different career, say you're tired of going through the same old routine, career, job, and you want to branch out, do something different, start a ministry, start a new career, start a business, they are like, what are you doing? What's happening? You know, like, why are you changing? They can't stand that you're trying to improve yourself. Or if you want to better your looks, um, start wearing different clothes, uh, more makeup, or you want to get your hair colored, get a different style, lose weight. They get flustered. They don't know how to handle it. They don't mind you maybe losing a few pounds here and there, but whoa, hold on. When you're starting to lose 40 pounds, 60 pounds, hold on now. Who do you think you are, right? When you want to get a bigger home, they are like, what are you doing? What's happening here? When you achieve things in your life, accomplishments, awards, you're in publications, you publish a book, you write a book, you are on a podcast, on a TV show, they are like, what are you doing? Who do you think you are, right? When you develop your gifts and talents and skills that the Lord has given you and you say, hey, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to develop these things. Um, they don't like that because you are no longer underneath them. Right. You are maybe uh, at their level or surpassing them. What are some of the things that you hear from Jealous Jen? Mm -mm -mm. Who the heck does she think she is wearing that, wearing that outfit, wearing them shoes? No, she didn't. You know, the truth is the very things that jealous people say to you to demean you, to make fun of you, maybe, is actually the very things that they admire, admire about you. The Bible says that which we judge others about that which we can't stand about others is actually something that we struggle with ourselves. The very thing we can't stand in other people is the very thing we struggle with uh, in ourselves. And I'll say the same thing whenever you, uh, whenever you make fun of someone about something, it's actually something that you really admire about them. So be careful, be aware of the jealous person and learn to remove yourself from them, uh, from their presence. The fifth characteristic of a toxic person that you need to avoid this holiday season is indifferent Ina. That's right. Ina is the person in your life that's actually the most hardest to detect. She is not overtly jealous, doesn't complain, criticize. She's not a gossiper. So that's why she's difficult to detect, but she is indifferent. She's neither good or overtly bad. She's just there. She represents routine, tradition in your life. Uh, she represents the mundane, the stagnant living of your old life. Now, a lot of times, Ina is the person of your childhood. She is the person um, that could be a childhood friend, a family member, a relative, whoever it is, but they were there from long ago and they served you and were maybe your best friends, your ride or dies in one season of life, but no longer is, um, is, is beneficial to you in your life. Uh, or or you necessarily in theirs. I remember, for example, I had a friend in my life where we did everything together. Uh, and then when we got married, I mean, from childhood to teenage, college years, getting married, you know, and as, as a married person, I remember just calling them because this person would call me routinely every week at the same time, all the time. And we'd have the same conversations, just different days literally same conversations different days it would be like hey how are you good how are you how is your husband good how is yours how are the children good how is yours how is work good how is yours i mean that's essentially what the conversations were week in and week out every single week until finally i was like you know what i am no after spending one hour on the phone with you i am no better 
when I get off of the phone with you than I was when I started. And so I had to do a lot of soul searching, soul digging, praying, talking to the Lord about this person because I felt guilty uh, letting go of this person that didn't necessarily do me wrong. But what the Lord was revealing to me was, hey, they're no longer serving you in this season and, and uh, going to be beneficial to where I need you to go, where I'm trying to take you. So I had to have the courage and the boldness to end that relationship uh, because I was no longer helping that person and, and she was no longer helping me. So I had to cut the cord and in order for me to go and really to help her to grow into in her life, I had to actually release her and let her go. And so some of you may also be in the same boat that I was in and, and have uh, people in your life, whether they are uh, Gia the gossiper, whether they are uh, Kathy the criticizer, negative Nelly, woe is me Wanda, jealous Jan, or indifferent uh, Ina. You have these people in your lives. And I'm telling you, friends, we at some point in our lives also have been these people. It's not just that we are surrounded by them, but if we're honest with ourselves, we too have been one, two, if not all five uh, people uh, that have been toxic, uh, whether at some point or stage in our life. And what I'm saying to you is that God has a great plan for your life. And the only way that you can um, be aware of these toxic people in your lives is through the help of the Holy Spirit. When you submit your friendships, your relationships, your marriages, you know, every every relationship that you have here on this earth to the Lord, God will begin to reveal to you, hey, who you need to remove, who you need to distance yourself from, who you need to just uh, detach from. He will slowly begin to reveal it to you. And I pray, friends, as he does that, maybe this holiday season or when you get alone with him, that God will give you the boldness, that he will give you the courage and the strength to do what he has called you to do uh, so that you can be all that he has created you to be and do all that he has created you to do uh, for his glory, for his kingdom, and for his name's sake. I love you, friends. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share this content with someone who you think will be blessed. And lastly, I'd love to hear from you. Tell me in the comments who has been toxic to you without revealing any names and how you think you can um, uh, step away from that unhealthy relationship. All right, guys, I love you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.